Welcome everybody. This is a uh, technique for fixing a bleb leak without destroying the bleb and without uh, ruining the, uh, the pressure. Here's uh, the clinical appearance of our wonderful little leak and it's one of the unfortunate uh, effects of a bleb. They either scar down or eventually thin out and leak. So this one's leaking and uh, here you can see me putting in the subconj anesthesia. That's 2% with Lido. In this particular case, I did use uh, Provis viscoelastic to uh, inflate the AC because the eye had completely collapsed thanks to this blood leak. Uh, very often times I don't. It uh, kind of depends on the status of the anterior chamber. I do like the uh, viscoelastic because it does help uh, keep the bleb inflated when I do the uh, subconjunctival uh, pass. So here I am uh, making the radial uh, cautery. That's not my normal cautery tip. We didn't have the, the eraser that day. And uh, then we go in uh, adjacent to the bleb. So I'm, I'm working in good tissue that has nice vascularity. And I'm going to undermine into the uh, ischemic tissue. Here I am breaking up that uh, ring of steel that we all love so much. Uh, the fibrotic band that kind of delineates the bleb. And then I uh, change to a uh, uh, scissors that has a longer nose and is a little more blunt. So it allows me to kind of do blunt and uh, cutting and dissection at the same time. The goal is to get to the other side of the bleb because uh, we're going to be passing a needle all the way through. So here's our amniograft. And uh, I have no financial ties to these people. Um, the material works extremely well. So I've been using it for at least a decade. And uh, what I do first is I kind of trim it to about the size of the bleb. Uh, it doesn't have to be precise, but I don't want too much material flopping around in there. So about that size. And now I'm going to do something to kind of demonstrate the uh, epithelial side versus the other side, uh, membrane side. You can see when I touch the epithelial side, nothing happens. The WEC does not stick. Touching the membrane side, it sticks quite well. So the goal is to place this epithelial side out. Um, do I have empiric evidence that this is absolutely necessary? No, I don't. And it probably works the other way too. I don't know. I've just um, always done it epithelial side out. It just kind of makes sense to me, but um, it probably works in both directions. And I've probably placed some upside down um, inadvertently as well. They all tend to work. Um, here, you, what you're seeing me do is um, I'm threading this through the uh, thickness and I'm going anterior posterior. And I'm going to do that with both needles. So I keep the, the this is a tenoproline that I keep double armed. And we're going to go through with both. Um, it's certainly possible to do this other ways. You could come through the bleb first and go up and over and back down. Um, I find getting through this tissue is really difficult. So having two sharp needles that haven't been used before is extremely helpful. So here I'm putting a little bit of viscoelastic into the bleb. I don't always do this, but in this particular case, the bleb was collapsing down to the point in the, uh, where I didn't think I was going to be able to make this pass. This is one method of making a pass. I have a, a little clip that's showing a slightly different technique as well. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of different ways. The goal here is to pass it through the tissue clean without uh, getting caught into anything. And then you're going to come out in vascular tissue on the other side. It's super important. You go from your vascular tissue radial wound to vascular tissue on the other side. We don't want to be trying to sew uh, any of the ischemic bleb. So this um, technique will seal the bleb and uh, it will definitely keep it functional. Um, but as far as growing new vessels, it really won't, won't really do that uh, to any great extent. So here we go. So now the needle's coming through. And this whole technique has been an evolution um, in technique. Originally, I was using conjunctival autographs on top of the bleb, and then I went to this amniograft on top of the bleb. Um, never really liked that much, never thought that worked very well. It was extremely tedious, and I'm not sure what got me to put the material subconjunctival, but um, this works amazing, and I've been doing this for a long time. And so far, I've had almost none of them fail. So here we go. This is the second needle. So you see the first needle's already through and just kind of hanging out waiting. 
and then I'm going to do the same kind of a pass with the second needle. It's going to go under the bleb. It's not going to engage anything. I kind of wiggle it back and forth as I'm going in to make sure I don't engage anything. And uh, you'll see why in a minute, because I need these, this suture to pull the, uh, the material all the way across. So here we're going to exit the, uh, the vascular tissue again. There we go. So now we have our, <coughs> our graft all snugged up with the suture. Um, this is a different case. I'm showing a alternate technique. This is a capture technique with a 27-gauge uh, needle. So here I did not use viscoelastic, and I've got the blunt uh, forcep inside the bleb, and the needle goes into vascular tissue. It's going to drag along the uh, forcep so that the tip doesn't catch anything. You'll see me kind of wiggling it a little bit to make sure I'm on the forcep so the tip does not grab onto any tissue and the forcep is protecting the bleb. So I'm actually on the other side of the uh, forcep surface there and running right along with it so it can pass freely. And then in a second you'll see it come out through the, uh, the radial incision that I did not show being made, but it's exactly the same as the other one. There we go. And then now we're going to do just a, a simple handoff with uh, putting the needle in the inside the 27 gauge needle and pulling it through. So this is just an alternate technique I wanted to show. Um, use whatever you're most comfortable with. The most important thing is that the suture passes all the way completely under the bleb and exits in vascular tissue. There we go. All right, back to the first case. So here's our um, graph that's been trimmed and with the sutures placed already. It's uh, basically kind of a horizontal uh, mattress type suture. And now I can put it in and then grab the both sutures and pull. And so it's going to kind of help help pull that all the way across and snug it in. And now I know my my graft is, is nice and secure and in a great position. And then this is just a, a, a nice little um, suture to keep the graft from going anywhere while I'm closing the radial incision. I don't think it has any place to go once everything's closed, so possibly not even needed. But it's just nice that it, it doesn't have an opportunity to roll up on itself. Here I am closing the radial incision. This is a running horizontal mattress with the 90 polysyn suture. That's a, an absorbable. And um, this is exactly the same closure that I use for my uh, shunts. Um, I'm just kind of running through it there really quickly because there's nothing super interesting about a uh, running horizontal mattress. And uh, over, like I said, uh, over the years I've, I've done many of these and uh, and this is what they look like. It pretty much looks the same as the way we started, um, with one exception. The, uh, the leak is either sealed now or will seal within the next several weeks. It doesn't always seal immediately. Um, you can give it up to a month or more, and it just takes a little bit of time. But uh, there we have it, a subconjunctival amniograph for the bleb leak. Thank you so much.